I'm Dan. I'm Robin. We're the Ramblers. Okay, this morning we got up bright and early and we are at Kepler Cascades in Yellowstone National Park. There's Dan and me. We're waving on that mountain, our shadows. There we are. See us, Dan? I do. We are on the Continental Divide. Once again. Yet again. Back and forth, back and forth. Here we are. 8,262 feet in Yellowstone National Park. We got this body of water going through here, kind of long, full of lily pads. And trying to decide, is it a creek? Is it a river? Is it a pond? No, apparently it is a lake. Oh my gosh, here we are again at the Continental Divide. Another Continental Divide. We're you know, 10, east. 15 minutes from the last one. East water flows, west water flows, yada, yada, yada. You've heard it before. It's not a straight line. It loops around and here it does a big loop and we drove across one part and another part. So here we are again at the Continental Divide right here. If Dan was to spit, his spit right here would go westward. My spit West, would go westward ho. Would go eastward ho. Go back east. Yeah, you don't say eastward ho, do you? It's westward ho and back east. Back east. Up north. Out west, back east. Down south. Continental divide. Okay, this is the West Thumb Geyser Basin. Yeah. Here on the shore of, is that Yellowstone Lake? It is Yellowstone Lake. Yellowstone Lake is the largest lake above 8,000 feet in North America. This is interesting here. There's three or four adjacent pools and they're all different colors. Well, yes they are. These are the uh, perforated pool. This walkway goes right through the middle of the geyser field here. What is this one on the left? This is the, this is the blue funnel. Blue. It's a funnel and it's blue. Look at this one. Listen. This one is boiling away like crazy. Oh, something didn't make it. That's what was screwing across the road. Oh, like a mouse or something? Yeah, yeah see, Aww. it's not. The That's hot not. tub's a little too hot. But it is a good size. Look, it would be little seats we could sit upon. Yeah. Move the little mouse who's, perchance, having a nice little hot tub. This is called Percolating Spring here. And again, we're right on the shore of Yellowstone Lake. This one here is called the Bluebell Pool. Wow, it's beautiful. As I head to the Black Pool, I'm going to be getting my steam facial. Ah, opening up those pores. Oh, that is hot. Well, if the Polaroid sunglasses on, you can see very far into the water, but it probably doesn't show up on video, I wouldn't think. I think that's working. I don't know. I'm shining the lens through my polarized glasses to see if you can see any better. This is Yellowstone Lake, and this is just one bay of it. It actually goes much further out. But this lake is, what is it, 20? Sorry about that. 20 miles in length. It is an average of 140 feet deep, but at its deepest point, it's 410 feet. Isn't that something? That's pretty deep. And the warmest it gets is in the summer. A balmy 45 degrees Fahrenheit. This is called the Lakeshore Geyser. Yeah. So you can see, I don't know if you can see it on the video or not, but there's a bunch of little fish swimming around the top of that. So there is still um, hot water flowing up 
from underneath and probably bringing bacteria with it that the fish are feeding on there. There's another one over there, another little vent hole. This particular bay, the West Thumb, looks like a volcanic caldera and it could only have been formed and it's very deep. It could only have been formed, they say, by a massive explosion. 410 feet deep. And they think that took place about 125,000 years ago. But obviously there's still a lot of geothermal activity underneath. So it could go again, whenever it felt like it. This one is called the fish fishing cone. Fishing cone. And what's the deal with it? Well, back in the 1800s, this was discovered, and it's a really cool story. Fishermen discovered it. They would be able to go out there and fish, stand out there with their fishing pole, catch a fish, swing over, and dangle the fish above that pot at 199 degrees where they could cook it. So it became such a tourist attraction, people would actually come out here to fish, they would be wearing chef's hats. A lot of people got hurt because it's so hot and it's no longer able to do it. But two of the nicknames were the fishing pot or the chowder pot. But wouldn't that have been cool to have a chef's hat and eat your fish right out there, right off the hook? Not very vegan though. No, no. That is really cool. This is another cone like the fishing cone, very close to it. A little higher, a little out of the water more. It's called the Big Cone. Think anybody ever calls it the Big Kahuna of cones? <laughs> There's actually marinas here in Yellowstone. Of course, Dan found the marina of course. on the Yellowstone Lake, a little bay of it, near uh, Lake Village. Bridge Bay. Bridge Bay area. We're on a thing called Gull Point Drive. This is Gull Point. Uh, on the edge of Yellowstone Lake. Very pretty area. Dan and I found a little hidden turnout on what drive are we on? The Gull, Gull Point Drive. Gull Point Drive, and this is another portion of Yellowstone Lake. Yeah. I always want to say something else. <laughs> anyway, look at this. It's, it's really very pretty. Dan, a boat, a boat. There are boats in use. Beautiful lake. And you can see the Lake Hotel across over there. We're headed that direction. Here we are at the Lake Hotel, looking at the lake. Yeah, and we were just across over there. And you know it's cold because there's snow in those mountains right across the way. Yikes. Yuck, I don't like that S word. This is the Lake Hotel. So oh, here we are on the uh, porch of the Lake Hotel. There's one of the old National Park buses. Robin is having her vegan thing. And I am about to have a bison bratwurst mm. sandwich. We're walking to La Hardy Rapids. So you can hear the sounds. Smell the smells. Oh, I can only do that. Oh, it smells wonderful. Oh, I could be a park ranger. That's what I want to be when I grow up. Here we are at the rapids. Yay! Can you hear them? They're beautiful. Yeah, listen quick though, because they're very rapid. Ah, nice. They smell good too. Robin sees water. She's got to stick her feet in it. And apparently she's got to chronicle it with video. All right, I'm gonna stick my little feet in. How cold is it? And there we go. Orange toenails into the water. <sighs> not too bad. Oh, no, not too bad. Oh, pleasant actually. Yay! We did it. Our first uh, bison encounter in Yellowstone. Another one looks like he's taking a snooze while people drive right by. Yeah, they do look gentle and docile, don't they? And here is a whole group of bison along the river's edge here in this valley. And this one's laying down to roll in the dust. There are many, many bison right here. And I'm staying way, way up high on this hill <laughs> to be safe. 
This guy is right by the walkway to the mud volcano. I've got a fence between me and him though, so don't worry. Oh, yeah. I think they're trash talking each other. Oh my gosh, look at this right here. Right here. They're right here. Oh my goodness. And this stop is for this thing here called the Sulfur Cauldron. But like the last few stops, it's kind of taken over by the presence of bison. Apparently they don't have a very strong sense of smell because he is like right next to that boiling sulfur pool. This is one of the world's largest volcanic calderas where the park is on a 30 mile wide by 45 mile long caldera which is where the, the volcano explodes that's how big a volcano is underneath us magma is pushing that hill over there up that hill is like six miles long it's being gradually pushed up by halt, uh, hot molten rock underneath down in these pools here this is called the sulfur cauldron that's sulfuric acid basically boiling away in there and a bison standing in the middle of it and he's just like taking a sauna there or something he hasn't moved since we got here maybe breathing in all this sulfuric acid has uh, stunned him well, guess what you come out tonight and hang out at sulfur crater yeah they call it the grand canyon of yellowstone apparently it's called yellowstone canyon there is the lower falls into the canyon. You can even hear it from here. There's a dam and the lower falls. And there's people right there and a road. This is Inspiration Point. And if you look over there, you can see there's you can see evidence of a lot of rock slides. Those the rocks over there are not real strong because of all the sulfuric and activity and there's a lot of there's a lot of earthquake activity we're on a fault line here so it's always changing and rock sliding and such here 1975 it dumped a bunch of rock so if you come back in a few years this might not look exactly the same from madison campground in yellowstone national park we're the ramblers Robin using her hammock that she had to have for the first time. Notice she's not going to fall far when it collapses on her. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm that low? <laughs> yeah. It's a fist. I'm a fist low. <laughs> like I said, you're not going to fall far when you fall. Here, I thought when I was it like, collapses. <laughs>